Hello and welcome to week nine lectures for organizational behavior. This is Saida conducting this recording session. Today we will be looking into the difference between fast and slow thinking. We will compare and contrast the rational model of decision making. Uh, we will be discussing the relationship that influences the three primary strategies that are being used by uh, to find selected solutions. We will explain the model of decision making style. We will also scale it uh, of commitment model. We will summarize the advantages and disadvantages in, of involving groups in decision making process. We will explain how participant uh, participative management affects the performance compared to brainstorming and normal grouping techniques. We will also look into the Delphi methods and a computer aided decision making model describing different stages of creative processes. So to begin with, uh, decision making, it can be at times very fast, at times it can be very slow. So when we talk about fast thinking, these are activities that are automatic through extensive practice. Uh, the skills are also learned, whereas slow decision making or thinking process requires close attention. This a brain tries to switch between uh, back to system one as well. If you look at the model of decision making, the rational model includes certain stages. Uh, there are four stages. Step one is identifying the problem. Step two is generating alternative solution to the problem. Step three is selecting a particular solution. And moving to step four, which is implementation and evaluation of the solution. If you look into the model of decision making, uh, the, we need to figure out all the possible alternatives of the problem. We need to know the consequences of each alternative that are also known. We have to have a preference of consequences well organized and which are stable. There should be a comparison that's been carried out to determine the preferred alternative. If you look into the decision making framework by Carnet, this is based on the premise that decisions are made under bounded rationality. So decision making is characteristic by limited information processing, use of rule of them or shortcuts, which is limiting by decision biasness, uh, choosing a solution that is good enough or that is satisfying. The incremental model is focused on having a decision based on cost. A big decision might have a bigger cost as well. When uncertainty is moderate or small, so small decisions are not costly to reverse. Decision end up as a series of small increments, and this is also known as the muddling effect. Uh, the next one is a garbage can. So when we face any problem within the organization or in our personal perspective, there are different problems that uh, come to our way, and there are definitely different types of solutions. Uh, there are to that certain particular problem, and there are certain participants who contribute to that problem or to the solution. And we have some choices of opportunities to resolve that problem. So if you look at the application of how to think about decisions, so decisions do not follow one specific method. So what worked in one process or one problem might not be efficient in solving another problem as well. So sometimes doing nothing is optimal. So there are four valence of decision-making, which gives us really hard time when we want to make a decision. So the first one would be narrow framing of the decision that we have at our hand. It can be based on bias information that's been collected. Emotional temptation also focus on action based on the reflexes, or it can be a rose tinted method as well. So if you look into the advantages and disadvantages of decision making, so the advantage is greater pool of knowledge, definitely additional perspectives of different people involved in it, greater comprehension, increased acceptance, and the training ground as well. But this also come along with some disadvantages as well. At times, it can be based on the social pressure, the minority domination, uh, the log rolling, or it can be a goal displacement, or it can also lead to group thinking. 
If we involve the employee in decision making, this makes a participative management. So this involved in predicted uh, to increase motivation, but does not work in all situations because individual perception is uh, in the design of work is con uh, counterproductive when employees are highly dependent on one another. Whereas employee involvement is less likely to succeed when employees mistrust the management. If you look into the brainstorming and focused creativity, uh, this is a process to generate quantity of ideas. Free willing is also encouraged in this type of situation. Criticism is discouraged. Quantity of idea is uh, pursued. Uh, combining uh, and uh, piggy banking on ideas is also highly encouraged. If you look into the nominal group technique, this is a process to generate idea and evaluate solutions. So this technique reduces all the roadblocks to group decision making uh, by probably separating the brainstorming from evaluation, promoting balanced participation, incorporating mathematical voting techniques. Moving to the Delphi technique. So this is a process to generate ideas from physically dispressed experts. This is usually conducted through survey method. The last one is computer-aided decision-making. This is uh, used uh, to reduce the consequences, roadblocks, while collecting more information at a faster rate. If you look into the biasness or heuristic uh, in decision-making, so this uh, forms due to the availability bias. Uh, this can be representativeness bias as well, overconfidence bias, anchoring, uh, escalation of commitment, and framing biasness. Thank you so much for listening.